Hi, my name is Katie Piper. I'm a TV presenter and writer, and I've just written a new book called A Little Bit of Faith. It's now available for pre-order at Waterstones and Amazon, and it'll be out in the shops in September. Hi, I'm Leah McFall. Um, I am a singer and songwriter. I uh, first appeared on The Voice um, in 2013, Will I Am's team, um, and toured around for years before becoming an independent artist. Um, this is the first book I've ever written with SPCK and ever, to be honest. Um, it's called More Trust, a part of the More series, and it is about giving your dreams to the trustworthy one. Um, and it is out in July and available for pre-order on Amazon as well. Great. 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 <laughs> it's, um, how are you today? I'm really good thank you your book sounds really interesting what um motivated you to write it um well basically I was singing at um a Hillsong conference in 2017 I was singing and speaking um at it a uh, part of their spheres section where you basically talk about kind of your wee journey what you work as and how God's been with you in it for me it was just the journey through the music industry um and yeah, just the fact that like, you know, I'd got signed and I was kind of over in LA and I was in with like basically thought all my dreams were coming true. And then like within about a week, everything changed and I got released from my label, but I was still contracted, wasn't able to sing. And, you know, just how my journey with God kind of went in that way before becoming an independent artist, which is a completely different um, vibe than being signed. <laughs> and just, yeah, basically about how much scripture uh, has been the absolute rock of all of my journeys in life and um, so I was talking about that and then I was approached by SPCK that asked me would I speak on their more series and they asked me could I talk on trust which made me laugh for ages because it's probably the one topic I struggle with the most in my faith and um, <laughs> so I decided to write this book on maternity which was um it's my first it was my first child and pregnant when I was my second and I thought maternity I would just be sitting there and um, waiting for my child to wake up from his nap and um, and that didn't happen ever because he never napped so <laughs> when I finally finished the book I came down to my husband and like actually started crying being like I can't believe I finished this book um but yeah so just basically trying to encourage a generation on the fact that like scripture is in no way dated it is massively so relevant and important today and in no matter what you're doing whatever walk of life like scripture is what's going to keep you steadfast in your faith with God and just arguing the point that actually God's probably is the only one that is worthy of your trust um so and then just dealing with the ups and downs of that of like what it's like to kind of feel have the different falls in life that then make you maybe start to falter and feel like has he has he let this happen to me and you know things like that so just dealing with stuff like that throughout it as well so yeah that's that's why I wrote mine <laughs> your, your book sounds amazing too um what inspired you to write it I'm so looking forward to reading it oh thank you well it was actually in lockdown um on my Instagram stories I was sharing um different affirmations like a daily affirmation a quote or a mantra and then my followers would also find um, different affirmations that they liked and they'd share it with me and we kind of like built up a community in what was quite a dark time you know on some days because of the uncertainty and yeah for some people hope was being lost and for me like I have my faith but not all of my followers have a faith so yeah I, I was able to lean on that faith in the difficult times but for those that aren't really uh quite into that or they're not ready for that the affirmation was kind of an accessible way to find hope to find joy to find reason behind that um so I was reading those affirmations from an old book that I'd written years ago an affirmation book and my followers kept saying we want a new book we want new affirmations um so yeah it was great that I managed to partner with um SP SPCK to do this new book and as the title suggests a little bit of faith it does involve um, part of my own relationship with God um, there are bits of scripture and stuff that are taken back to the Bible but also a larger percent of it isn't and I think that was the great thing I found in lockdown that where the message was kind of inclusive it was bringing people to examine faith and explore it and see if it was for them and I think some people may not identify as any kind of religion but when the going gets tough, they still pray. Yeah. And really understand what that means or why they do that or why it brings them comfort. So it was really great to open that conversation of why do we find this so comforting? Yeah, that sounds brilliant. Yeah. 
<laughs> was it big? Was it a big comfort for you? You know, you talked about your journey in the music industry. Was faith kind of such an important part of that? Yeah, I mean, it always has been. Um, from when I was a wee girl, I was brought up in a Christian home. Um, and then at the start of the book, I talk about three major falls that happened in my life. One of them was my parents splitting up when I was just like um, a teenager. And um, the second one was actually losing my only sibling, my sister, in a car crash when I was 16. Um, and then the third one was, you know, kind of going after these dreams and um, <laughs> moving to London and everything and then ending up, you know, with them being so close to coming true but whenever I was work actually in them realizing oh flip I don't really enjoy this <laughs> as much as what I thought it's a bit lonely um and then about how that all then kind of shattered in many ways and just like throughout my life through like kind of you know those real family heartaches um and then through you know the kind of pursuing pursuing the music career and being in an industry that you know doesn't really recognize God in that way in that way um yeah it just it basically just about how much my faith has been so important to me throughout all of that and um, but yeah I think like mostly kind of talking just about how like in those times you know there could have been real time there could have been real opportunity to be like right well God doesn't exist or why did God allow this to happen to me if he's a good God or you know just all these real questions that like <laughs> in many ways can make your faith probably falter quite a bit but um actually then I came across like just this scripture about how in the old testament you know they the, the people would have set up pillars every single time God had been there for them or had helped them win like a victory they set up pillars that they were able to then look back on and reflect on and be like well God was really there for me in that time and this is how he pulled me through this um, and setting up those pillars and being able to go back and see that is what made them be like whenever they went through another battle or another hardship, they were just like, well, hold on, God God did that before. And if he's brought me this far, he's not going to leave me. And um, so it's just about reflecting back on those different falls in life and how God's brought you back um, or just being there for you or just brought so much incredible goodness out of it. Um, and you're just like, okay, so in no matter what, like he's, he's going to do it again, you know? Um, so yeah, just, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I would operate without faith in many ways because it was, very lucky to have been like brought up in it and I understand that so whenever I'm chatting to people and you know it's not there it's not what they were brought up in it's not something that was introduced to them as a child or anything I totally understand their questions <laughs> and like also why they're a bit like do you understand how it sounds in many ways a bit far-fetched and you're like yeah I totally get that you know um but just obviously living it and and just really knowing that God is such a relational God and he's not frightened by any of your questions and he's not frightened and or worried about his own identity whenever you question it um he's he's just who he is and came across this verse as well that said you know um even when God can only be faithful he, he that is who he is so even when we are unfaithful he will remain faithful um and that's just kind of been the steadfast scripture throughout of just knowing that even whenever I'm kind of like struggling with trust that he is who he is and he'll always remain faithful That's so interesting because like you said normally you know for some people any kind of tragedy would actually really make them question any existence of any kind of God but like yeah. you said it actually strengthened your relationship um yeah. what about for anyone listening who's going through some kind of hardship or trauma or tragedy now um aside from a faith do you have any tips of how to stay positive how to stay strong yeah, I mean, like, I think, like, I think we're all very relational. I think this year's just showed us that we're very relational. And um, I also do some work for a mental health charity. And um, I do some of their communications work. And, you know, one of the things that we really say is just so important to connect um, with people. And, you know, obviously, you've got the likes of like going outside and spending time outside and closer to nature and all the effects that that can have with like your mental health. And whenever somebody says it to you, it sounds a wee bit, you know, I don't know waffy faffy and whenever you're actually facing real hardship but actually just going out and kind of connecting with a friend and connecting with a loved one picking up the phone and having a real conversation with open-ended questions like and you know just I think this year has just showed us that no matter what you know ever is going to happen we'll find ways of connecting with each other because that's what we were born to do you know and um, which is why we're all so used to zoom and you know having flipping a million quizzes with our families and even though we're the capital of Canada we're still all hanging out Do you know I mean? I'm very quizzed out I have stopped the quizzes now I must announce <laughs> me too literally mainly because it just made me realize I don't know anything 
it's yeah. quite embarrassing. <laughs> I've how bad my general knowledge is. That's been basically the biggest outcome for me of the last It's devastating to find out that you're actually dumb. So <laughs> I, <didn't, laughs> I only know my world. Like a quiz came up on music. I'm fine with that. And then a quiz came up on friends. And obviously it's that. Anything else, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Do you have any tips then for people that are struggling? Yeah, I think for me, look, it's so important to be like transparent and honest and actually not have this expectation of always feeling, uh, whether it's connected to God and trusting or whether it's feeling happy and positive, whether it's feeling like a helpful, useful friend, sometimes just surrendering to what is, is really important. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if you do have a faith, it's easier to surrender because you always know you were never in charge of those plans anyway. So you can kind of feel comfort in that that it's okay yeah. to let, let go but but if you don't have that faith there's still something very reassuring about sort of saying today is not a good day and it's all about experiencing every spectrum of on all emotions you know it's not just about having the good ones and attaching shame to the bad ones it doesn't equal yeah. not coping and I think if you kind of process and release all emotions that's when the good days do outweigh the bad because you're actually letting those things leave your body so you know don't mistake the positivity movement with always being happy and, and seeming to cope yeah no that's really good because I think sometimes like even one of the things that we would use with um aware is like the most draining thing is pretending that you're not struggling do you know what I mean like it's so draining to try and like always pretend that you're okay whenever you're not like and nobody is <laughs> yeah it's so true what would you say to people at the moment I mean here we've just had an announcement that lockdowns are going to be delayed by another four weeks and it does feel like lots of things change all the time if there were people kind of watching this who wanted some kind of hope or encouragement what would you say to those people over about specifically with lockdown do you mean or just yeah, in general? I just think in general like because when people hope means a different thing to different yeah. people and, and ho holding on to hope can be hard if it's kind of influenced by the external so I think lots of people work on dates and goals and significant yeah. things happening and I think one thing we all fear collectively is change and if yeah. things change people do start to lose hope and I think I've noticed that and I, I just wondered would a lot of people who have searched this or searched these keywords are they looking for hope are they holding on to hope or, or are they finding it hard to to feel motivated yeah I think it's just like one of the things my family have always said is that you know it's quoting the scripture of the fact that there is a season for everything and mm like seasons do pass like one of the things my dad would always say to me is this will pass like love that expression yeah. yeah and even when you're in it you're and you're just like but it won't though there's genuinely no way out like even losing my sister like it's not going to pass you know she's not mm -hmm. you know I'm not going to see her again in this lifetime obviously I do have a faith and believe that I will see her again because of what Christ has done um but you know it's not <laughs> in many ways you know it's not gonna it's not gonna pass like in this one I'm still gonna have to always mourn her in the joy joy even the joyful things in life you know but um there is a season for everything and that real grief that heavy grief of like not being able to get by or whatever not being able to I don't know just feel like you're gonna in any way have something to be hopeful for or, or love again in, a, in that kind of way or a close kind of friendship like a sibling you know could be that yeah. actually like it you know that side of it does progress on and you know God does bring other people obviously for me I will always relate it back to God but um you know like it does bring like people into your life and you know that real sadness like it has passed you know it'll, it'll tinge again through different things but you know it has passed and yeah so I just think even for this kind of whole lockdown like people have lost people and I think I think for me the, the most heartbreaking thing is hearing like people have lost people and haven't been able to say bye to them and things like that or being able to like okay. yeah together in a we you know for a proper funeral of like a celebration of life and all and I just think like that is just you know that that or or even like new wee mums you know that haven't been able to you know kind of have their have their mom support or, or mm -hmm. care support or you know have their kind of like you know um partner in with them even for the majority of the birth and if the birth was anything like mine <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it was pretty traumatizing um but yeah so you know just like even that like I think I think there is going to be a long time after this where we're recovering from it as well um but like again it will pass like there will be we will get back to normal life like 
you know it might look slightly different but like it'll be it'll become the new normal and we'll find joy in it again like I think I think that would be me just being like like yeah. on path. <laughs> it's my yeah. too you can never keep on that lockdown word but um <laughs> what about you um do you know what there's a beautiful I never know if I get this word right a beautiful acronym of um hope so h-o-p-e hold on pain ends and I really love that sentiment of actually similar to what you're saying that actually nothing is permanent unless we want it to be. So physical action, man's will, those things are permanent, but but how we feel about them evolves and changes and becomes, yeah. more, becomes more manageable. So I think like you're saying in time of crisis or bereavement, whatever it is, it, it's, it's keeping that mindset of the way I feel will change and it won't be in this instant, but I will not be stuck here forever. And I think we can apply that to such a wide range of situations. Yeah. And attach faith to that um if we're just at the beginning of exploring a faith journey we yeah. can attach that curiosity to that so I've found that very helpful like, all through my life kind of remembering that yeah um when when did you find faith you know, I'm in my 20s so I'm 37 now um and I was 24 so I don't come from a religious family my family actually atheist Mm-hmm. So I'm the, I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the one. They're like that's the crazy one in the family. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, they support me. I support them, and we're all like very open minded. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's actually, great because that's even been an environment where you're you're asking questions, like, and you're you know you're answering them as well. Like, it's not mm-hmm. always kind of. I love being surrounded by people that aren't in the same mindset. Um, even if it is cl- closer to home, in many ways that. The debates can become a little bit more heated, but um, <laughs> I do. My family have massive Christian values, even though they're not Christians. So you know, yeah. they, they love thy neighbor. They treat people how they want to be treated. Yeah. You know, they help less fortunate. So I, I see them as Christians, even if they don't see themselves. Yeah. As <laughs> that's oh, that's so good. That's so interesting. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you as well, just like from you find faith, like how did it help you, kind of in your wee journey, like. Um, I suppose a massive thing for me was it made sense. To, a lot of things finally made sense. A lot of unanswered questions went answered. A lot of closure, a lot of reassurance. Um, it gave me confidence and a higher yeah. self-esteem, self-worth. It, I find it actually a relief knowing none of this is in my hands. Like, yeah. thank goodness, <laughs> you know. So yeah. I, I think that that's great, you know, just to be able to let go. And when you can let go in life is when you find acceptance. So it almost took a burden off me um, mm-hmm. finding a faith, so. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I know, I think like for me and even kind of, you know, whenever things were out of my hands, when I'd like made the album and stuff and it was um, sitting in the hard drives that weren't mine. Um, and like, I wasn't able to release music and all of that. Like the frustration in that of not having con- the control, it was the same thing. It was just being like, well, it's like I've done this journey like every day with feeling like, um, you know, God has completely got his hands over it. I feel like I only got favor on the show because of him. So, you know, I'll just completely continue to hand it over to him every single time I try and take it back, um, which I do minutely, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just, um, yeah, it's, I totally agree with that. I think it's just literally for me. And I do understand that that would actually be a big struggle for a lot of people. They would probably struggle with not having control over it, especially maybe artistic people, because, um. Oh, we're awful at wanting control over everything um, but, yeah, yeah. but like actually yeah I find the beauty in that as well and um, I think that's also comes from like again looking back at those pillars of how he's brought you and just be like right well you can you know you've you're the one that's done it better before so um I trust that you'll be able to do it again and then even whenever like I met my husband I didn't tell him this for quite a while, but um, once met him and, you know, I was secure that he was lovely. Um, (laughs) Like, I remember like just kind of thinking, you know, if it had been in my hands and I could have picked someone for me and like completely designed him up, like I would have got it wrong. Like it wouldn't have been the right person for me um, because I wanted like a musician and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And all this here, it turns out like, I don't really, it just would not have worked, whatever. (laughs) And he's just lovely and just, um, you know, just is so caring and just the sweetest person ever and it's exactly what I would have needed but I would have got it wrong had I have designed for him so even just looking at that then I can look at my future and these future dreams that I have and just be like well do you know what god like 
you're definitely better at doing this than me. So, you know, <laughs> I'll let go of control on that one as well. <laughs> It's so, such a great way to look at it. It really, really inspires me. It's been so great getting to know you in a little bit. Thank you. For everyone watching, can you tell us the title of your book and where you can buy it from? Yeah, so it's called More Trust and it's um, Giving Your Dreams to the Trustworthy One. And it's on Amazon pre-order at the minute. I think it comes out on the 13th of July. So very exciting. And can you please tell us the title of yours and where to get it? So mine is called A Little Bit of Faith and it's an affirmation book. Um, it's on pre-order now for Amazon and Waterstones and it comes out in September.